In the last lecture, we asked the question, which good should you pick to maximize your happiness? We used indifference curves to compare different bundles of goods. Now we're going to get more precise. We're going to write down a mathematical expression for your preferences. This mathematical expression is called a utility function. Utility is what we call happiness or well-being. A bowl of delicious ice cream might give you a lot of utility. An old box of stale pretzels may give you very little utility. A function is a mathematical way to translate many things into one thing. So a utility function is a mathematical expression that translates bundles of goods into a single valuation of utility. In other words, it's a way to take a bunch of stuff like pizza and cookies and turn that into a level of utility. You tell the function how many pizza slices and cookies you get, the function tells you how happy you are. Let's go back to our example from last lecture to see how this works. We found that if you start with two slices of pizza and one cookie, and then add another cookie, you're happier. Now if we take away one slice of pizza, we're back to the same level of happiness. Now we'll represent mathematically what we just saw graphically. What a utility function does is turn goods into happiness. When economists work with utility functions, we typically write down a specific math equation. It could be something easy, like utility equals number of cookies plus number of pizzas, or something more difficult but more realistic. We'll explore that in the math supplement to this lecture. But you don't need the math as long as you get the intuition. A utility function describes how happy the goods you consume make you. Okay. A utility function tells you how well off you are. But how does it help you resolve the tough decisions you need to make? Like, should I have the next slice of pizza? To do that, we need to bring in a new concept, marginal utility. Marginal utility is the change in utility from each additional good you consume. Or how much utility do you get from the next slice of pizza? To understand marginal utility better, let's walk through a simple example with numbers. This table shows you how much utility you get from different amounts of pizza. At zero slices of pizza, your utility is zero. You're not consuming anything. At one slice of pizza, your utility is five. At two slices, it's nine. At three slices, it's 12. And at four slices, it's 13. What's your marginal utility in this example? Remember, marginal utility measures how happy the next slice makes you. So to calculate marginal utility, you just have to see how much your utility changes when you add a slice. When you go from zero slices to one slice, your utility goes from zero to five. The first slice brings you five utility points. That means the marginal utility from the first slice is five. The next slice gets you from five utility points to nine utility points. That's a gain of four. So the marginal utility from the second slice is four. The third slice brings utility up by three, the fourth slice by one. That's all you need to do to calculate margin utility. Look at the table and see how much utility goes up when you add each slice. Already, we can see two key rules we'll use throughout the class. First, each slice of pizza makes you happier. More pizza, more utility. Second, each new slice of pizza makes you less happy than the previous one. In fact, we're almost always going to assume that each additional unit of a good makes you less happy than the previous one. And we're going to call this diminishing marginal utility of consumption. Diminishing marginal utility means that each extra unit of a good increases utility by less than the previous unit of the good. And this makes sense. If you're hungry, the first slice of pizza makes you very happy. The second slice makes you happy, but not quite so much. And the third slice even less so, and so on. The same is true for cookies. The first one makes you happy, the second one less so. It's the same with pretty much every type of good. Of course, the margin utility for different goods will look different. Let's think about socks and newspapers for a second. That's not a sentence I normally say. But anyway, what's the margin utility of today's newspaper? It can be useful to buy a newspaper if you like reading the news or need to pass the time. But would you ever buy a second copy for yourself? Probably not. 
the margin utility for today's newspaper drops pretty fast. Once you've read the news once, there's not much value in getting a second copy. Now think about socks. If you own no pairs of socks, the margin utility of socks is very high. You can get a lot of benefit from buying the first pair. Now imagine you only own one pair of socks. What's the margin utility now? Unless you love doing laundry every day, the margin utility is still really high. You can get a lot of utility from owning a second pair and a third pair and so on. There's still diminishing margin utility, but it doesn't diminish as fast as it does for a newspaper. So if you're ever confused about marginal utility, remember to think about newspapers and socks.